Hello, my name is Michael Sulf, and I am the Principal Architect and Chief Engineer here at GoChemos. Um, I was one of the creators and inventors of uh, the unit, uh, our biosanitizer, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about that today. Uh, in some of the other videos uh, presented by Dr. Betts, uh, our Chief uh, uh, Scientist and Chief Chemist, he talked a little bit about the process of ionization, electrolysis, um, how an ion uh, binds to a biological um, pathogen and it kills it and so we won't go over all that here um, but if you haven't seen those videos do watch those because it's very very interesting stuff um, in how we can uh, use modern technology um, to solve an old problem um, literally a many thousands of years old problem um, of how to keep water uh, safe from uh, bacterias and other pathogens um, well, I do want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the GoChemist unit and why um, we think of it as more of a biosanitizer than an ionizer. Uh, ionization has been around for a very, very long time. Uh, in fact, in this industry, um, in uh, both commercial and residential swimming pools, uh, ionization is not a new concept to, um, to act as a pesticide or a biocidal agent uh, to get rid of uh, these pathogens in, in water supplies, whether it's a pool or uh, even in drinking water supplies, uh, like in hospitals uh, that use these things, uh, or cooling towers where you have a built up an accumulation of a biofilm that you need to get rid of. Um, but where um, these have been problematic more so in the residential pool industry than anywhere else is that they have been uh, more or less um, non-intelligent units. And by non-intelligent, um, uh, what I mean is that um, they achieve their electrolysis process um, by passing uh, a current through um, copper rods or silver rods, uh, but they do so without uh, any knowledge of how much electricity is passing through there at any given time. They do so without any knowledge of what is going on with the circulation system, the pumping system of uh, a pool, uh, for example. And what tended to be the results uh, historically is that um, you would over ionize. You'd put too many of these ions uh, in solution. And, and too much of anything obviously is not a good thing. Uh, whether it's too much chlorine, uh, obviously is very bad for your health. Uh, but too much of uh, copper ions, for example, while not necessarily bad for your health because uh, copper is very well tolerated by the human body. In fact, it's necessary for the, the formation of uh, blood vessels and a number of other things in your body. Um, but too much copper can do, do things like uh, slightly alter the color of uh, parts of your pool where the copper ions will bond. Um, but that happens in very, very high concentrations of copper. Um, Dr. Betts talked about uh, concentrations of copper being in the uh, 0.3 to 0.4 part per million range uh, in uh, a biosanitizer. Historically, the ionizers for residential pools, for example, didn't know what the concentration of copper at any given time was. And because they were timer based, what this meant is, is if you have your pool um, and your pool was set to go, a pump was set to go from 9 a.m. to uh, 4 p.m., for example, you would tie into that same timer not only a pump, but the ionizer. And so the ionizer would be creating copper ions all day long between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m and really have no idea of where it is in its level. And so consequently, what you get, you'd get levels greater than one part per million. Well, levels greater than one part per million um, are way too high uh, to do the job because 0.3 to 0.4 part per million is, is really the ideal, the sweet spot for these to do their job. But this is where you get into the range of, be, of staining, uh, for example. What, what we do differently um, is we've, we've pioneered some processes um, that measure the amount uh, on, an, on an instantaneous basis of the electricity that's flowing. Um, and what I'll do is I'll kind of show you on, on one of our part of the units here. What I'm holding is, uh, this is the internal workings of, of this unit right here, which goes in line in your circulation system right after the pump and before the filter. So the water will go through here, and this part is actually housed inside of here. Now recall in the electrolysis videos that Dr. Betts talked about copper uh, and he talked about silver and he talked about currents passing through these various elements. So we can see on, on this right here, we can see two copper rods and if you can see, you can see a silver rod here. 
And this is also something that we've done differently at, uh, at Go Chemless and has typically done in the past. Um, and let me digress for just a second and talk about uh, these copper rods. Um, historically, uh, when you're using a copper silver ionizer, um, alloys have been utilized. And an alloy is simply just um, a metal that is composed of two or more elements or metals. So for example, um, in the old ionization units that we might refer to as ionizers rather than biosanitizers, um, you would not see this third element right here. You would see two elements, and rather than being 100% copper, which these are, it would be something like 97% copper and 3% silver. So as these generated their ions, it generated 97% copper ions and 3% silver ions. What we've done is we've kind of gone a step beyond that. And using microprocessor control, we can precisely control the amount of voltage to each one of these rods to, um, to modulate, if you will, the amount of ions of each of these metals going into your pool. So rather than the old system of just being on or off, either generating or not generating, we actually monitor exactly what's being generated as electrons flow between these rods, these rods, and these rods. And then we selectively turn them on and off as necessary to maintain that 0.3 to 0.4 part per million concentration inside your pool. This makes for more or less of a set it and forget it type of, of unit. Uh, we did not want to make something that uh, you constantly had to monitor, constantly have to change, um, be uh, out there all the time um, checking levels and, and stuff. So what we did is we, we created this so that it, it literally is a self-monitoring unit. Um, and that's how it does it, is by monitoring the exact amount of current going between uh, these, various, these various rods right here. So let me just put this down. Um, also would like to talk to you uh, about uh, one of the ways we pioneered um, in how to turn the unit on and off. And it may sound a little bit uh, trite, uh, but this is one of the failings of the older units. And the older units, again, recall, were, were tied to timers, um, either the pool timer, the pump timer, or their own internal timers. Um, and they would have to be synchronized to the pool's pump because you don't want ionization to be occurring if there's water not flowing. So uh, we developed a method using acoustical wave monitoring. And what that is is basically vibrations. And we measured the various types of vibrations that occur in a pump system. So built into our unit here actually is uh, a transducer that what it does is it monitors the various vibrations. And it's able to tell the difference between water flowing, the vibration from a pump, and for example, if the pump is off and somebody is using uh, a lawnmower next to it or something like that uh, and is picking up those vibrations. And so what the unit does is it actually categorizes these different vibrations and, and determines if the pump is on, the pool pump is on, or the pool pump is not on. If it is on, it will go ahead and based on its internal formulas, it knows whether or not it should turn on or turn off to maintain that 0.3 to 0.4 part per million concentration of, of copper and that 30 to 40 part per uh, billion concentration of, uh, of silver. Um, so it's not on when it doesn't need to be on and it's not off when it should be on. As long as water is flowing and it determines through some pretty complex formulas internally that it should be delivering these ions into your pool, uh, it does so. Again, this makes for more of a, a, a set it and forget it. Once you initially set it up, which is as easy as um, literally, you know, after the install, pressing a couple buttons on the side um, and turning new pool mode on, uh, it will bring it up to the initial level. And um, after you set it for the first, uh, let's say the first week or so, uh, you really don't have to look at it again. Maybe if you check it once a month, it would, uh, would be even more than adequate. So uh, hopefully I've, uh, I've given you a little bit of uh, uh, information about the, uh, how an ionizer uh, versus our biosanitizer uh, is, uh, works a little bit differently, is a bit, is a bit novel and unique, and, and how we've overcome some of these uh, shortcomings from the past uh, when um, these older units that, that were out there did things like staining uh, or, or some people will call it flashing of the pool. So hopefully I've given you a little bit of uh, oversight into what creates uh, a biosanitizer versus an ionizer. 
um, these unique technologies created by Go Chemless uh, for the residential pool market. Um, so unique and novel, we have applied for um, a number of patents actually, not just one, but a number of patents on, on these uh, new technologies such as the, uh, the multiple electrode technology that, uh, that I showed you earlier. Um, and hopefully the, that this, uh, this was a little bit informative for you and I invite you to watch some of the other videos on our website uh, from Dr. Betts. And um, again, my name is Michael Self, Chief Architect and um, Engineer at Go Chemless. And have a good one. Thanks.